In the heart of the city stood a quaint toy store, a sanctuary where joy was measured in smiles and laughter. That's where my story begins, where fate decided to play its hand. I'm Lily, a 29-year-old who found solace among the Isles of Toys, each one holding a story waiting to be told. It was a regular day, the store buzzing with the usual chatter, when he walked in, Jake, the man who unknowingly was about to turn my world upside down. He wandered through the aisles with a look of determination, his eyes scanning the shelves for the perfect gifts. Excuse me, he said, approaching me with a gentle smile, I'm on a mission to find the coolest toys for the children of my friends. Any recommendations? I smiled, pointing towards the latest action figures. You can't go wrong with these. Kids love them, and there are top sellers this month. Jake picked up one of the figures, examining it with an intrigued expression. Looks like you really know your stuff. Do you enjoy working here? I laughed, a warm feeling blooming inside. I do. It's more than just a job. It's like being a part of countless happy childhood memories. But tell me more about you. Is being the cool uncle a full-time job? His laughter echoed through the store, a sound that felt oddly comforting. It feels like it sometimes. But seriously, my family is pretty big, parents, two younger sisters. One is about to get married and move to another city. It's chaotic, loud, but I wouldn't have it any other way. We continued to chat, our conversation flowing effortlessly. I shared my story, how life had been a solitary journey since my grandmother passed, leaving me her small, cherished house. Jake listened with genuine interest, his eyes never leaving mine. It sounds like you've had your share of challenges, he said softly. Your grandmother must have been a remarkable woman to raise someone as strong and kind as you. The store started to quiet down, signaling the end of the day. Our conversation, however, was far from over. It's not often you meet someone who understands the value of family, I remarked. Your family sounds wonderful. A bit like the big, happy family I've always imagined. Jake's gaze held a warmth that made my heart skip a beat. They are wonderful, and a bit overwhelming at times. But you know, maybe one day you could meet them. I have a feeling they'd love you. As we parted ways that evening, the air was thick with unspoken promises and possibilities. Little did I know, this chance encounter, this hopeful meeting, was the beginning of a journey full of unexpected twists and turns. The day I was to meet Jake's family, my heart fluttered like a butterfly in a garden of hope. Dressed in my best, I rehearsed conversations and imagined laughter-filled rooms. Jake held my hand as we walked up to his family's apartment, his grip reassuring yet tense. Ready to dive into the circus? Jake joked, trying to lighten the mood. I squeezed his hand, a nervous smile on my face. As ready as I'll ever be. Just promise me they won't throw any pies. The door swung open to reveal a bustling living room. Jake's mom, a stout woman with sharp eyes, scrutinized me from head to toe. His dad, a towering figure with a booming voice, offered a brief nod. And then there were Sarah and Megan, Jake's younger sisters, their eyes glinting with something I couldn't quite place. Family, meet Lily. Lily, this is the crew I warned you about, Jake introduced, a hint of pride in his voice. I extended my hand, my voice barely above a whisper. It's so nice to meet you all. I've heard so much about you. Jake's mom was the first to break the silence. So, you're the girl who's been keeping our Jake so occupied. Tell us about yourself. Jake mentioned you work at a toy store? I nodded, feeling their eyes on me. Yes, I love it there. It's like being surrounded by joy every day. And, well, I was raised by my grandmother. She left me her house, and that's where Jake and I. Sarah cut me off with a laugh that felt more like a jab. Raised by your grandmother, huh? That explains the antique vibe you've got going on. What is this, a retro fashion statement? The room erupted with laughter. Jake's dad chuckled. Good one, Sarah. Lily, you'll get used to our family humor. 
I forced a smile, my heart sinking. This wasn't the warmth I had anticipated. It felt more like walking into a frost. Jake tried to smooth things over. Come on, guys. Let's not start the roast just yet. Lily's got a great sense of style. Right, Lily? But the damage was done. The evening dragged on, each minute heavier than the last. Sarah and Megan's remarks, veiled as jokes, felt like thorns. Jake's parents, though not as overt, had a dismissiveness that stung. And Jake, bless him, seemed caught between a rock and a hard place, his laughter forced, his glances apologetic. As we left that night, the door closing behind us felt like the end of a performance I never wanted to be a part of. Jake's hand and mine felt distant, and the family I had hoped to embrace seemed like a mirage that had vanished, leaving behind a bitter aftertaste of reality. Sorry about that, Jake murmured as we walked down the corridor. They can be a bit, overwhelming. But it'll get better, I promise. I nodded, the words tasting like ash. It's fine, Jake. Maybe it's just first meeting jitters. But deep down, I knew. This was more than jitters. This was a glimpse into a world I wasn't sure I belonged in. A world where warmth was replaced by cold judgment, and acceptance was a currency I didn't possess. And as we walked back to my quiet, humble house, I couldn't help but wonder if the fairy tale I had dreamed of was just that, a dream, now slowly dissolving into the disappointing introduction of reality. The evening I walked into my home, expecting the usual quiet comfort, only to find it disrupted, remains etched in my memory. The lights were on, a sure sign someone else was there. A sense of intrusion crept over me. I dialed Jake's number, my voice trembling with unease. Jake, I think someone's in our house. The lights are on, and you're not home. His laughter on the other end jolted me. Oh, that's just Sarah. I gave her our spare key. She wanted a place to chill. I stood frozen, disbelief and anger intertwining. You gave your sister a key to our house, without asking me? Jake's tone was dismissive, come on, Lily. She's my sister. Plus, it's not like she's a stranger. As I entered the living room, there she was, Sarah, lounging on our couch, my personal laptop open in front of her. The sight felt like a violation of my private space. Sarah, what are you doing? That's my laptop. I said, my voice firm yet controlled. She didn't even bother looking up. Relax, Lily. We're family now. I figured what's yours is mine, right? That evening, when Jake returned, I confronted him. Jake, your sister can't just barge into our house and use my things without permission. It's not right. His response was infuriating. Lily, you're overreacting. She's just using the laptop. Don't make a big deal out of it. But it is a big deal to me, Jake. It's about respect and privacy, I argued, my frustration growing. Jake just shook his head. I don't see the problem here. She's family. You need to be more accommodating. From then on, Sarah's visits became a regular occurrence. She'd walk in whenever she pleased, treating our home like it was her own. It wasn't just the intrusion that bothered me, it was her complete disregard for our privacy. She'd leave dishes in the sink, move my things around, and never once asked if it was okay. Every time I brought it up with Jake, he brushed it off. She's just comfortable here. Isn't that a good thing? Why are you so hung up on these little things? But they weren't little things to me. They were the threads of respect and boundaries being pulled apart. My home, once my sanctuary, was now a free-for-all, and I felt like a guest in my own space. One day, I came home to find Sarah sprawled on the couch, a pile of her laundry on the living room floor. Sarah, this isn't a laundromat. You can't just do your laundry here, I said, my patience wearing thin. She rolled her eyes. Oh, please, Lily. It's not like I'm asking you to do it for me. Plus, your washer is way better than ours. I couldn't believe the audacity. 
This was more than just familial comfort, it was entitlement. And Jake's inability to see that, to stand up for our space, was driving a wedge between us. Weekends used to be my retreat, a time to unwind and recharge. But that changed when Jake's family decided our home was their new weekend getaway. It started one Saturday morning. I was greeted not by the quiet I cherished, but by the loud chatter and laughter of Jake's family sprawled across my living room. Morning, Lily. Hope you don't mind, we thought we'd spend the day here. Our place is a bit cramped at the moment. Jake's mom announced cheerily as if they'd done nothing out of the ordinary. I stood there, dumbfounded, my private sanctuary turned into a public domain without my consent. Um, sure, I wasn't expecting visitors, but make yourselves at home, I managed to say, the words tasting bitter. Jake, who had seemingly forgotten the concept of personal space, chimed in. Isn't it great, Lily? The more, the merrier, right? The day dragged on, their presence an overbearing weight. The living room, once my haven of peace, was now a mess of loud conversations, clutter, and the overwhelming scent of food. They acted as if it was their right, their house. As the day turned into evening, Jake's mom called out from the chaos, Lily, dear, could you whip up something for dinner? You're such a fantastic cook, and we're all famished. The audacity of the request left me reeling. Actually, I was planning to order in tonight, I replied, trying to mask my frustration. Jake's dad laughed, a booming sound that filled the room. Why order when we have a chef in the house? Come on, Lily, show us what you've got. I felt trapped, my own desires and comfort overshadowed by their imposing presence. Cooking in my kitchen, I felt like a stranger, an outsider catering to the whims of uninvited guests. Later that evening, I tried to talk to Jake about it. Jake, this isn't working for me. Your family can't just take over our home every weekend. Jake, ever the family man, just shrugged. They're just being family, Lily. This is what families do. You're overthinking it. But it's our home, Jake. Our space. There should be limits, boundaries. I argued, my voice a mix of plea and demand. He didn't get it, or he chose not to. Lily, they're not doing any harm. We have the space, why not share it? I went to bed that night with a heavy heart, the sounds of their laughter and chatter a stark reminder of how my sanctuary had been breached. My home, my rules, my peace, all invaded without a second thought. And the man I shared my life with couldn't, or wouldn't, see the lines being crossed. The once peaceful sanctuary of my home had become a battlefield, the air thick with tension and unspoken words. After countless disputes over the invasion of my privacy, I had retreated to my bedroom, the only space I foolishly thought was still mine. But even that last refuge was about to be snatched away. It was early Saturday morning, the kind of morning where the world should have been still and quiet. But tranquility was a stranger in my own home. I was jolted awake by the sound of my bedroom door being flung open. Disoriented, I blinked against the harsh light as the figures of Jake's parents loomed in the doorway. What? What are you doing? My voice was barely a whisper, shock rendering me almost speechless. They didn't even flinch at my obvious discomfort. Instead, Jake's mom, with a sweep of her hand that felt like she was claiming territory, announced, We've decided this will be our room now. It's the nicest in the house, after all. Jake's dad nodded in agreement, his eyes scanning the room, not as a guest, but as someone assessing their property. Yep, this will do. And don't worry, we left our apartment to Sarah. She needs it more than we do. Their words hit me like a physical blow. This was no ordinary intrusion, this was a full-blown takeover. My room, my private space, was being stripped away right in front of me. Shaken, I scrambled out of bed and found Jake in the kitchen, oblivious or indifferent to the chaos. Jake, we need to talk. Now. Your parents can't just take over my room like this. Jake sipped his coffee, unfazed. Lily, 
Why are you making such a big deal out of this? They're just trying to be comfortable. Besides, you can stay in the attic, right? His words stung more than I thought possible. The attic? Jake, are you listening to yourself? This is my house, and your family is treating it like a hotel. He shrugged, a gesture that spoke volumes of where his loyalties lay. Well, it's their house too now. You can fix up the attic. It could be a nice project for you. I stood there, disbelief and rage coursing through me. My home, my sanctuary, was being carved up and handed out like slices of pie, and the man I had pledged my life to was holding the knife. As Jake walked away, leaving me to grapple with the reality of the situation, I realized I was alone in this fight. The home I had built, the life I had envisioned, was being dismantled, piece by piece. And the one person who should have been my partner, my ally, was the architect of my despair. But as I stood in the shell of what used to be my refuge, a fierce determination took root. This was my home, my life, and I wasn't about to let it be taken from me. The battle lines were drawn, and I, Lily, was ready to reclaim what was rightfully mine. The night before Jake and his family left for the wedding, the house was thick with tension and unspoken words. They laid down their plans, like a king dictating to his subjects. We're off tomorrow, Lily, for Megan's wedding. You'll have the house to yourself for a week. Should be plenty of time to get your new attic room ready, Jake's mom declared with a smirk. Jake chimed in, a cold look in his eyes. Yeah, Lily. It's only fair. Mom and Dad need the space. It's a small sacrifice, really. Their laughter echoed through the house, a cruel soundtrack to the mockery of my life. The door closed behind them the next morning, the silence they left behind heavy with the weight of their words. But as the sound of their car faded away, a new resolve rose within me. I had always thought a big family was a blessing, but their presence in my life had turned into a curse, one I was determined to break. The first step was clear and unwavering. I marched to the local hardware store, the determination in my steps ringing louder than the jingle of the door as I entered. I need new locks for my house, I declared to the clerk, my voice a mixture of resolve and newfound strength. As I returned home, the new locks in hand, each click and turn of the screws as I installed them felt like a proclamation of my independence, a reclamation of my space. This house, filled with memories of my grandmother and the dreams I had for my own life, was mine and mine alone. With the new locks firmly in place, I turned my attention to the next task. Jake's belongings, once scattered throughout the house, were methodically packed away. Each item I placed in the boxes was like shedding a layer of the life I no longer recognized. As the week passed, my anticipation grew. The day of their return loomed over me, but the fear that once might have gripped me had transformed into something fiercer, a readiness to confront whatever came next. And then the day arrived. The sound of their car pulling up, the confused voices as they found their keys no longer worked, the rising volume as reality set in, it was a symphony of my making. What's this, Lily? Playing games now? Open this door. Jake's voice was a mix of command and desperation, his words hammering against the firm resolve that shielded me. I opened the window slightly, my voice steady and unwavering. It's no game, Jake. It's reality. The reality where I reclaim my home and my life. Your things are outside. You can take them and go. His mom's voice cut through next, sharp and accusatory. You think you can just throw us out like trash? After we welcomed you into our family? The irony of her words almost made me laugh. Welcomed? No, you invaded, you disrespected, and you overstepped every boundary. This is my home, and it's time you all accepted that. The voices rose, a cacophony of disbelief and anger. Jake's dad, his voice booming, joined in. You can't do this to us, Lily. We're family. Family sticks together. I shook my head, a slight smile, playing on my lips. Family respects each other. 
family supports and loves, not belittles, and takes over. What you call sticking together felt more like being trapped. That's not family, that's a hostage situation. Their pleas turned into threats, their threats into insults. But with each word they hurled at me, my resolve only grew stronger. I had built a fortress, not just of locks and doors, but of self-respect and dignity. As the reality of the situation settled in, Jake's voice, once full of authority, now trembled with a hint of realization. Lily, please. Let's talk about this. We can sort it out. But the time for talking had passed long ago. There's nothing left to talk about, Jake. I gave you and your family every chance to be part of my life, my home. But you chose to treat it like a free-for-all. You chose to stand by and watch as they disrespected me, in my own home. That was your choice. Now, this is mine. The neighbors, drawn by the commotion, watched from a distance. Whispers and glances were exchanged, the drama unfolding before them a stark reminder of how quickly the veneer of civility can crack. And when the noise became too much, when the insults and the banging on the door threatened to breach my newfound peace, I called the authorities. The arrival of the police was the final punctuation in a long and exhausting sentence. I explained the situation, my voice a testament to the journey I had been on. The officers, their faces a blend of sympathy and professionalism, turned to Jake and his family. You need to leave now. If you refuse, we'll have to take further action. As they finally collected Jake's belongings and retreated, a profound sense of calm enveloped me. The house, once a battlefield, was now quiet. The door, once a revolving entry for disrespect, was now a barrier against it. A week had passed since I took a stand, the quiet in my home a stark contrast to the turmoil that had once reigned. I was sipping my coffee, the warmth a gentle reminder of the peace I had reclaimed, when a knock shattered the tranquility. It was Sarah, her face twisted in anger, standing on my doorstep, like an unwelcome storm. Lily, you think you're so high and mighty, kicking everyone out? You're nothing but a selfish, greedy woman. Sarah spat the words out, her voice dripping with resentment. I leaned against the doorframe, my stance firm. Sarah, this is my home, and I will not be insulted in it. Your family overstayed their welcome, and I did what was necessary. She scoffed, her laugh harsh and jarring. Necessary? You've turned everything upside down. I had the apartment to myself, and now? Now it's a circus again. Mom, Dad, Jake, all crammed in because of you. Her words were meant to wound, but I only felt a profound sense of relief. That's not my problem, Sarah. You all made your choices, and now you're living with them. Sarah's face reddened, her anger a tangible force. You can't just toss us aside like this. We're family. I shook my head, a sad smile on my lips. Family doesn't treat each other the way you treated me. I gave you all chances, but you chose to ignore them. I deserve respect and peace in my own home. Her words became a blur, insults and accusations thrown aimlessly. But they no longer touched me. I had built a wall, not just of locks and doors, but of self-respect and resolve. As she continued her tirade, I realized the truth in her words. Her anger wasn't just about being thrown out, it was about the loss of her comfort, her space. And that realization only strengthened my resolve. After what felt like an eternity, I cut her off. Sarah, this conversation is over. Your family's actions brought you to this point. I suggest you focus on finding a solution, instead of wasting your time here. With that, I closed the door, the sound a final note to her symphony of fury. I filed for divorce, my heart heavy but certain. Jake's pleas, his family's insults, all blocked and left behind. I was free, truly free, not just from their physical presence, but from the weight of their disrespect. I started to rebuild, my home once again a sanctuary, my life my own. As days turned into weeks, 
the memory of them faded, like a bad dream in the morning light. My peace was hard won, but it was mine, a testament to the strength I never knew I had. And in that peace, I found not just solace, but a profound sense of triumph. I had claimed my life back, one lock, one packed box, one signed paper at a time. And as I stood in my reclaimed space, I knew that this was just the beginning.